Creating interactive elements in Edge Animate involves using JavaScript and jQuery. This course covers some of the basic interactive properties that you can apply to elements with little to no knowledge of JavaScript and jQuery. However, if you're a professional coder or take the time to learn to write JavaScript, then you'll be able to easily create more complex interaction using Edge Animate. In this lesson, we're going to explore the code panel, creating labels, using labels as references, creating visual feedback, and adding HTML content. In the last lesson, you were introduced to the script panel. The script panel is where you added code to create interactive elements. The code panel is where you go to see all the code for your composition. This includes all the elements and all the animation. You'll use the code panel more and more as you start to add interaction to your compositions, therefore inputting code to create events and actions. You can view code, check for errors, and edit the code in the code panel. To view the code panel, go to Window Code. Click the Full Code button at the top right of the panel to toggle between Full Code and Non-Full Code mode. When you're in full code mode, you can see the code for the JavaScript file for the composition. If you go back to non-full code mode, you can click on an element on the left-hand side of the panel and then view the code for that element on the right-hand side. Here we're going to click on button 3. The code appears on the right. You can also click on the plus button. This appears to the right of the stage when you hover your mouse above stage. When you click on it, you'll see a menu that allows you to add an event to the stage, to any element on the stage, or to the timeline. To delete an element or trigger, right-click on it and select Delete from the menu. If there are any errors in your code, Edge Animate will let you know at the bottom left corner of the panel. Since we don't have any errors, we see no error. If there were an error, Edge Animate would tell you where the error occurred. If you looked at the code, a red dot would appear by the line of code that contains the error. Let's delete this part of the parenthesis and I'll show you what it would look like. So now there's a syntax error at line four. If we look at line four, we can see a parenthesis is missing because it's the one we deleted. So let's correct the error. When we do, the error message goes away. If you make any change to the script when in either full or non-full code mode, the changes are saved in the composition. Thus far, we've used time in milliseconds to reference a point on the timeline when creating JavaScript code. The problem is that if you need to increase or decrease the length of an animation, you'll also need to adjust the time in the code. To get around this problem, you can use labels instead of time in your arguments. Labels represent points on the timeline. They can also move with your animation. That means if you need to increase or decrease the length of an animation, the labels move also. To create a label, click the downward arrow in the timeline. A text field will open up to the right of it. Enter a name for the label. The name you enter should represent what appears at this point in the timeline to help with organization of your composition. Hit Enter. To rename a label, double-click it and then enter the new name. To move a label, drag it to a new place on the timeline. To copy or paste a label, select the label, right click, and then select copy, and move the playhead to a new location and press Command or Control E. To delete a label, select the label and then press delete on your keyboard. Visual feedback lets a viewer know that certain parts of your composition are interactive. A hyperlink may change colors when the mouse passes over it. A button may as well. Again, these things let a viewer know that you want them to interact with the page, and that they can. Let's learn to add visual feedback to the button we created in the last lesson. The first thing to decide is what kind of visual feedback you want to appear when a viewer moves their mouse over the button. We've decided that our button will become a little darker in color, so we've imported another version of the button image that's darker than the original, which is buttondarker.png. When you're ready to add the visual feedback to the composition, move the playhead to the point where you need it to be. Now we're going to move the new version of the button onto the stage, placing it directly over the original version. You only want the new version to show when someone moves their mouse over the button. This means we want to hide the new version. To do this, change its display property to off in the properties panel. A new keyframe is inserted into the timeline. The original image already contains a click event. When a viewer clicks on the button, it takes them to a web page. We'll have to edit this so we can add a mouse over event. Click the Open Actions button for the original image of the button. You'll then see the script panel. Click the plus button in the upper left hand corner and select Mouse Over. Move your mouse cursor to line 2 and then select Hide Show from the Pick an Action column. Click Show. 
Click on the original image name in the Pick a Target column and then select the new version in the column that appears to the right. Double click on the new version of the button. You can then X out of the script panel. Go to File, Preview and Browser. Mouse over the original image in your browser window and you'll see the button change when a mouse moves over it. However, it doesn't change back. To make that happen, click the Open Action button for the new version of the button. The script panel will open. Select Mouse Out for the time of event. Move the cursor to the second line of script and then choose Hide Show in the Pick an Action column. Select Hide. We're selecting Hide because we want to hide the new version of the button when the mouse moves off it. Click on the name of the button in the Pick a Target column. You'll then see the name of the original image. Double click on the name of the button again in the column that appears. Go to File, Preview and Browser. Try to click on the button. When you do this, you'll notice that you can no longer click on the button to be taken to a new web page. This is because you need to move the click action from the original button element to the new one. Click the Open Actions button beside the original button element. Click on the Click tab and then click the minus sign at the top left of the script panel to remove the click event. X out of the script panel. Now click the Open Actions button for the new button element. Click the plus sign and select Click. Now choose Links and Link in New Window. Enter the URL for Universal Class in the white box. Close the script panel when you're finished. Go to File, Preview and Browser. Your visual feedback is now complete and functional. In addition to visual feedback, you can also make the mouse cursor change when it moves over an interactive element. Here's how to do it. Select the new version of the button and then go to the Properties panel and turn the Display property on. In the Cursor section of the Properties panel, click the Cursor option to the far right and then choose a pointer icon. Turn the Display option back to Off for the new version of the button. In the last lesson, we learned how to add a hyperlink to a button. However, what if you just want to insert a hyperlink into text or create placeholder text on the stage that's replaced with the actual text when displayed in a browser window? To do that, you'll use HTML. The HTML method sets the contents of a text element. It can be used to replace the content of a text box on stage with new content in the browser window. You can also use it to include HTML tags and text, but first let's teach you to use it to replace text. On our stage, we've created a text element with filler text. We've named the text element body. We're going to replace this text with different text. To do this, we first go to the timeline panel and click the open actions button for the stage element. In the script panel, we select composition ready as the event. On line two, enter this line of code. Please note that body is the name of our text element. Yours may be different. X out of the script panel when you're finished. If you go to File, Preview, and Browser, you'll see the text you entered into the script panel displayed in your composition. You can also turn a word or section of text within a text element into a hyperlink. For example, if we wanted to turn the word text into a hyperlink, we could do so. Click on the Open Actions button beside the stage in the Timeline panel. Since we want to turn the word text into a hyperlink, we'll write the code around the word text. This is how it should look in the script panel. When we preview our composition in a browser window, we can see the hyperlink.